Brought to you by PrayLatin.com, makers of prayer cards featuring complete English phonetic renderings of Latin pronunciations. Today's news story is actually enormous in its implications, because we now have more bishops basically saying the same thing Bishop Strickland said that got him fired. At least we can assume Strickland was fired for speaking the truth, since no official reason has been given for his termination yet, though the Catholic media pundits who are making excuses for why he was canned all say that he was canned for having the same problems in his diocese that quite literally every bishop in America has in theirs. Management issues, fundraising issues, priests who aren't happy, who don't like their bishop, you get the drill at this point. But our bishop that we're focusing on today is not an American. It's Bishop Gadecki of Poland, who has some choice things to say about the Synod on Synodality. And you might think, well, the Synod ended a while ago, but no, he just said this stuff the other day. He has stuff to say about the coming consequences of the Synod and what Francis is trying to do to the church with the Synod. So let's just go right into the story. Headline from katholisch.de, the official news arm of the German bishops. Gadecki criticizes the world synod. Pope has broken with tradition. Breaking with tradition is an enormous accusation. Archbishop Lefebvre made the same accusations after Vatican II. Numerous bishops and laity have said the same thing about the state of the church today. Is this the kind of statement that could earn Archbishop Gadecki the same treatment as Bishop Strickland? After all, Bishop Strickland warned the laity to reject the innovations of the Synod of Sin and to follow Jesus instead of following Francis. Is there really a difference with what Gadecki is saying here? The other German website, Kath.net, provides better insight into this with the headline, On the opening day of the Synod, we all received the documents of the German Synodal Path by email. The opening day of the, of the Synod featured the German Synodal Way, which was, frankly, blatantly heretical and schismatic, as, and they presented it at the Synod of Sin as being front and center of discussions there. The German Synodal Way promoted the James Martin Sin. James Martin Pears being blessed, the, sin, the Germans demanded deaconettes and all the rest of the stuff we've come to expect and associate with the larger Synod more broadly. But key to this all is lay governance. It's how they want to achieve their goals. The Synodal Way echoed the German demand for decentralization of the Church and the placing of laity as authority figures in the Church, which Archbishop Gadecki calls clericalization of the laity. Worse, much of this isn't based on theology at all. Rather, it's, frankly, based on ideology, meaning raw political power being used to enforce secular norms. From the article, quote, On the opening day of the Synod, we all received the documents of the German Synodal Way by email. Almost all of the demands listed there give me serious concerns. I believe the church in Germany is in the greatest crisis since the Reformation. In return, I read the sending of the above documents as an attempt to spread the German problems in the church. The documents are based to a large extent on Protestant theology and the language of modern politics. This is what he describes the president of the Polish, what he, meaning the president of the Polish Bishops' Conference, Archbishop Gadecki how he note, describes it as being noticeably irritated in an interview with the U.S. portal Catholic World Report. Archbishop Gadecki continues, This gives rise to the belief that the Church should adapt to the world by adopting a democratic system and the standards of a liberal bureaucracy. In Germany, we basically have a Church with a developed bureaucracy. This results in the desire to limit the power of the bishops and the intention to establish a secular power structure, parallel to the hierarchical one, and to introduce secular supervision over the bishops. The Archbishop of Poznan was himself a delegate to the bishops' conference that took place in the Vatican in October. The Synod itself wanted to, quote, deal with the question of synodality, he explained, that is, with the search for solutions for shaping the relationships between the different areas of life within the church, such as bishops, priests, women and men religious, and lay people, so that this serves the work of evangelization in the best possible way. Most lay people in Poland considered this to be extremely important. They have also made it clear that they expect the church to find new ways to proclaim the gospel without compromising doctrine and remaining faithful to Christ and the gospel. Gadecki later explained in the interview that, quote, Germany is pushing hard for the introduction of the diaconate for women. However, 
they do not refer to theological arguments, but rather to the ban on treating the ladies different and promotion of women's interests. This argument suggests that this is not about the diaconate, but rather about the position of women in the church. Consequently, the introduction of the women's diaconate would not be a solution to the problem, but would only further fuel the dispute over the ordination of women to the priesthood. The archbishop also referred to a sentence from Pope Francis. The pope said that a woman, quote, is not entitled to the Peter principle, but to the Marian principle, which is more important, Gadecki emphasized. The fact that a woman does not have access to the ordination ministry is not a disadvantage because her place is much more important. In our catechesis, we make a mistake in explaining these things and end up returning to an administrative criterion that does not work in the long term. End quote. Does any of what he says the synod was proposing there sound remotely Catholic? Look, personally, I think the laity have too much input into the life of the church already, especially on issues of governance. A lot of what we've seen today is a consequence of the professionalization of the parish and diocesan management. In our time, we quite literally have people who go to grad school to learn nonprofit management and apply the same concepts used to manage secular nonprofits to the church. The thinking in the secular world has led to most nonprofits being turned into political organizations or into ones that are barely distinguishable for, from for-profit businesses. Why we would want to apply those lessons to the church, I, I honestly don't know, aside from a few obvious areas, like where the various laws that impact the church come into play. But aside from that, why would the church want to be managed in any way, like the United Way, or March for Dimes, or any other nonprofit? That remains a mystery to me. This is especially true when you consider that it used to be that most of the management of a parish and the diocese was done by priests and seminarians. Now, that's just not the case anymore. We have more laity involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the church now than at any time in history prior to the current age, and it hasn't exactly borne positive fruit. Bishop Gadecki's statements have gone viral online, and for good reason. His list of concerns suggests strongly that the laity are on their way to becoming the next best thing to priests themselves. He calls it clericalization. The difference being, they just won't have the sacraments. Over at InsideTheVatican.com, we get this about Bishop Gadecki's concerns. Quote, Archbishop Gadecki, a veteran of six synods of bishops beginning in 2008, and including this year's Synod on Synodality, discusses several themes, among them the very meaning of a synod of bishops, which includes lay people as voting members. He points out that the diversity seemingly sought throughout the two-year-long process of listening sessions throughout the worldwide church had the practical result that sometimes the non-Catholic voice was more audible than the Catholic one. Adding the trenchant observation, however, this is not what seeking God's will is all about. Archbishop Gadecki sees the purposes of the Synod on Synodality primarily as seeking solutions on how to arrange the relationship between the various states of life within the church, such as bishops, presbyters, religious men and women, and laity, so that it serves the work of evangelization in the best possible way. But he is skeptical about the path the church seems to be taking in this regard, saying, quote, the question arises whether there is a specific vocation of the laity and a secular path to holiness, or whether the only model is the priestly path, and the laity can fulfill the mission resulting from holy baptism to the extent that they become like priests. In the conversation about the laity, I see the need to defend the secularity of the laity against attempts to clericalize them, he, he warns. End quote. That's not all, though. Bishop Gadecki brings it back to the issues everyone was focused on before the synod began. Deaconettes, the James Martin sin, and all the rest that people thought the synod would rule on, and frankly still might this coming October when they have the final round of bishops' meetings. After, of course, they take care of the decentralization question. Those ideas, he says, lead souls astray and do a disservice to those Catholics who have those inclinations, but choose to live as Catholics should, resisting those inclinations and staying close to the sacraments. That has been lost on people in the spirit of indifference, in this attempt to make indifference the ruling ideology of the church. Quote, 
And when it comes to the questions which seem to burn most insistently in the minds of Synod delegates from the affluent West, as opposed to those from the East, what he called the churches of excess and the churches of scarcity, he asks, quote, Will the Synod in its entirety be a place for the transmission of faith or rather unbelief? I think that Christians in the West often doubt that they have something so essential to communicate to people that their fate, meaning salvation or condemnation, depends on its acceptance or rejection. So to avoid being rejected, they try to hide that part of Jesus' teaching, which might meet with opposition and expose only that which is shared with the world. Among the most obvious teachings that are met with opposition is the teaching that the James Martin sin is sinful. And while so many so-called James Martin multi-letter acronym Catholics wish to live in a moral lifestyle unbothered by church opprobrium, no one is more hurt by the attempts of the church to attenuate this teaching, to propose false nuances, and even to outright deny it in the name of advanced scientific understanding, than Catholics trying to live a life of chastity despite their disordered inclinations. People in this second group do not feel rejected by Catholic morality, the Archbishop said. On the contrary, through the church's teaching, they have been able to understand themselves better and have experienced a profound encounter with Christ through the sacraments. It is painful for them that in pastoral practice, they no longer encounter the church's teaching more and more often. There, they often encounter a typification that corresponds to the language of the James Martin movement but has nothing to do with the reality of their lives and even rejects it. These people, despite trying to live in a state of sanctifying grace and striving for holiness, feel abandoned by the church, which ignores their need for spiritual guidance and support, Archbishop Gadecki lamented. They do not understand why the church is trying to marginalize them. End quote. You know... It can be quite effective to turn the language of our adversaries back against them. At the very least, it shows their hypocrisy to those on the fence about these issues. And hypocrisy is key here. One of the bishop's critiques of the synod was that there was no real dialogue on issues. People were put into topical working groups, meaning their discussions were limited to whatever synod organizers had assigned them to discuss. Larger discussions were at best limited, and errors were not able to be opposed more effectively, leading to much of the bizarre final document's contents. I'm not surprised by this, and I bet you aren't either. But let me know, are you surprised that bish the bishop forcibly has to come out in opposition to all of this, and has accused Francis of breaking with tradition? Do you think he's actually right about the risk of clericalizing the laity? Let me know what you think in the comments, please, and make sure to like and subscribe. If you haven't, it does help, so to sharing this on social media, that helps a lot too. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.